not see me. So you got pegged out by your tribal vigilantes, did you, running mare? You must be flippin'. Get old, get foolish. Mr. Hale, I don't get it. What happened? Well, Mr. Hanrahan, most of the Shoshone people have a rather strange custom. They only allow their medicine men to lose five patients. When the sixth one dies, they do away with the medicine man. Usually in an unpleasant manner. Like running bear here, they had him staked out in the sun with wet rawhide around his forehead. <laughs> Must be kind of hard for him to get people to become doctors, huh? <laughs> More! More! Well, you ate everything I cooked, including my bedtime snack. You much good cook, good brave. Well, I guess I could whip up another batch as long as you put it that way. Oh, by golly, he's the spitting image of the Honorable Patty O'Keen, rest his soul. Friend of yours? Yeah, second cousin on my wife's side he was. But he couldn't stand confinement, poor soul. He withered away to nothing before he'd half finished his five year sentence. <laughs> Running bear. My name's Hanrahan, George B., ex-Boston contractor, and I can spot a kinsman halfway across the ward. So you're a high lodge wizard on the lamb, is that it? Running bear doctor. Oh, that's a fine, upstanding profession. And you tell me the Utes kill their doctors if they lose too many patients? <laughs> I was always led to believe that most Indians were savages. Please stay, Christopher Hale. Well, seeing as how your fellow tribesmen would separate you from your head if I ran you off, I guess you can go along with it. You good friend, Christopher Hale. But I don't want to catch you hanging out your shingle on this train. Oh, no more heal em. Too old. Long hours. <laughs> well, as long as you're traveling along with us, how about teaming up with me and my nephew? Uh, Mr. Hanrahan, Running Bear's a nice old gentleman, but he's liable to steal the saddle off your horse while you're riding. Oh, well, that'd just be a, be a touch of home. My cousin Terry, rest his soul, had the same talent. <laughs> Running Bear, I want you to meet my nephew, such as he is, Tim. Oh, yes, Uncle George? Running Bear here is traveling along with us, if he has no objections. I guess we got enough extra clothes in the trunks for him, haven't we? Oh, oh, uh, pl plenty. Uh, you white medicine man? No, that's not my specialty. And it's a shame, too, in view of their fees. Now, you run along with Tim here. Tim, you make him comfortable, do you hear? Uh, Mr. Hanrahan, I know you're a man filled with the milk of human kindness, but Running Bear could make it sour on you. Oh, he's a man after my own heart. The reform ticket chased him out of his tribe just like they chased me out of Boston. Besides, as my Uncle Sean used to say, rest his soul, he used to say, there's no telling who'll be getting the vote next, so make friends with everybody. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. You know to belong with Chris? A few years. He's unusual in a lot of ways. Youth medicine men don't usually live to be as old as he is. Would the youth really kill him if they caught him? Right now, and in a thoroughly unpleasant manner. Well, we let him tag along with us until we're out of youth territory. I wouldn't say he was a thief exactly, but be sure you count the wagons every morning. You're putting some coffee in that mix tonight instead of the mud and sand you've been using. Coffee good. No doubt. That's because you've been making yours out of cactus berries and the like. Tim, you're, you're a good boy in many ways, but when it comes to doing things around the camp, you're just about as handy as a candidate without a tongue. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you've been a medicine man for 30 years, huh? Good job. Best meat, best hogan. Much money. Ah, I know just what you mean. I had the same setup myself. As long as I had a relative on the city council. Tim, put a match under that pot. I'm dying of a terrible thirst. Well, I, I can't make the water boil any faster, Uncle George. You can make a column of figures jump up and turn handsprings in the air. But you can't do as simple a thing as boil water. Poor showing, my boy. You'll have to do better than that. He's supposed to take care of his poor old uncle, and he better do it if he wants to stay there, huh, Tim? 
Riding out on a flank today, running bear, and I saw some friends of yours. Young braves? That's right, and they know you're here. Stubborn. They'll go away pretty soon. Hawks, you don't think they come sneaking around here to take him, do you? No, we haven't been at war with the Utes for some time. There are arguments with high muckety bobo here. I don't want you riding outside camp, you understand? If running bear was fool, would die young man. To cook rabbit, gotta catch him first. <laughs> ah, you're just an old faker, running bear, and don't you deny it. Takes a faker to spot a faker. Mm. Smell good. Mm. Good old Irish whiskey. Right off the boats. Better than that cheap belly burner you get around here, Tim. Get me two cups. Only two cups, Uncle George? When I want to invite you, you will be duly notified. Him your son? No, sister's son. Trying to make a man out of him, but it isn't easy. Plenty strong. Him get mad one day. Trouble. He only showed sense enough to get mad. I think more of him. Hurry it up, boy. Andrahan's a little free with that whiskey around an Indian. Well, he's a friendly fellow that likes everybody, except maybe his nephew. Now, what is all of this, this junk now? Any medicine, cactus bulb, snake skin, rattle, dried lizard, smoke powder. <laughs> you mean you really use all of that stuff? I've got to use them something. I'll bet you beat a drum and holler, too. Got to have them drum. Them not believe in medicine man without drum. <laughs> and I thought my cousin Tim, rest his soul, was a swindler. Me not fake, I'll heal him. Well, if you heal him with all of that uh, flim flammery, I'll lay book they weren't very sick to begin with. Secret. If they real sick, not treat them. Go into mountain. Have power with great spirit. <laughs> ah. Just as I figured, old George B. can spot a brother under the skin a mile away. You're just an emerald green grifter, just the same as I am. Maybe no. Watch him, white doctor wants a Deseret. White squaw think him sick. She not sick. White doctor know she not sick. Him take him salt, make him little pill. She eat him. Next day she get up, work like horse, plow field all day. Hmm. White doctor give him salt. Running bear, give him drum. Who fake her, George B? White doctor or running bear, huh? The whole world is running bear, only it takes smart ones like us to make a living at it. Me not fake, I heal him. Oh, come on, you're among friends. What you know of Indian magic? I know you use the same magic that I used to when I'd submit a building bid for a new city hall to one of my cousins. Flim, flam, whoop de doo Razamataz and a big rake off for everyone concerned. Hmm. Big words. You teach them, me use them. Tell future. I don't tell me you're a fortune teller, too. See tomorrow. Tell if hunting good or bad, whether fight or not. Use a crystal ball or a deck of cards. Maybe you use tea leaves, huh? Bones of baby white buffalo. Way bones fall. Way tomorrow, next day, next week. Happen. I don't believe a word of it. It's true. All right, let's prove it. Kind of dull around here anyway. What do you mean? Well, let's have a party, a fortune telling party. <laughs> no. Bones, not joke. This, uh, this very expensive liquor. I don't think I'd be at all inhospitable. To ask you to earn it. <laughs> ah, come on over here, folks. My friend Running Bear is going to tell your fortune. No, no, this no joke. Ah, of course not. I'm serious. Come on, folks. Have a genuine youth witch doctor tell your fortune. That hey, I want to see this. Charlie, uh, you leaving fortune tellers? I certainly do. A chalk told woman down in New Orleans told me one time I was going to come into a lot of money. And that's why you believe in fortune tellers, huh? Not only that, she said I was going to get mixed up in bad company, and that actually happened. Yeah. May not be a bad idea at that. Things haven't been exactly sociable around here lately. You know, Chris, between you and me, I had my fortune told by that same woman. She'd come real close a couple of times.
long time not good no tomorrow. One straw bones can change. Oh, come on and throw him, running bear. Shut up, boy. In his own good time. Go on, running bear. Throw him for me. Oh, you good brave. I am. One day you meet big squaw, he big squaw with many children. Maybe they want you for fodder. Fine, I like kids. <laughs> Maybe better you run. Why? I like big squaws too. Big squaw got him mother, sister, brother, two cousins, ten children. Nobody worked. You work, better you run. Is that what them bones say? Bones not lie. I'll run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for you. <laughs> oh, you nice squaw. Too bad. You have lonely life all alone. Sad. You not find them someone live with. You live long time, but all alone. It's very kind of you to worry, but it's really not necessary. My son and I are going to California to live with my five grown boys and 17 grandchildren. <laughs> Rock, make them bones fall wrong. Oh, you have happy, long life with many children. Special all time. <laughs> uh, now for you, special throw, special good. What's the matter? Throw not good. Not good throw tonight. No more. No more. Now, what did he do that for, Uncle George? <laughs> He's a joker. Hale said he likes to make jokes. seem to bother you any when you threw them for those folks back there. Sometime fortune make them bones change quick. You throw them twice for me. What'd they say? Nothing. Ah, oh, come on now. You're talking to good old George B. Bones not clear. Say nothing. Well, throw them again. Bad time. Fine mellow whiskey running bear. Under certain conditions, <laughs> I might not mind sharing it. Hmm. Uh, George B., uh, bones not always true. Sometimes not mean what look like. Well, throw them again. You can wash them down with some of this. What did they say? Bones not always true. What did they say? Bones say you die in one week, George B. Maybe you're going to tell me that's what they said the other two times you threw them for me. <laughs> Maybe they tell you how I'm going to die. Maybe accident. Maybe somebody kill you. Not die in bed. Oh, you were very good. Now, what did they really say? Already tell you. That's not very funny. That's never funny. Drink now, George B. Sure. Sure. When you admit that you're, you're making a bit of a joke, but... Not joke. 
Sometimes bones make mistakes. You make mistake, mister, when you try to rag me. I don't joke easy. You... you give me whiskey now, George B. I tell you what. You, uh... You conjure up your own lick. Yeah. You do that little thing and... I'll begin to worry about dying. I'm not good know what's gonna happen. I saw you throw those bones again. Looks like you scared him nearly half to death. Not me. Scare himself. You watch him, Christopher Hill. Him die one week. Is that what you told him? Bones tell him. Now you listen to me running there. My people have troubles enough without this sort of thing. You have to read fortunes, at least make them pleasant ones. Only read what Bones say. All right, but you keep those things wrapped up somewhere. You know they're fakes, and so do I, but a lot of these people don't. You think Bones fake? Don't you? Sometime, sometime. I think I brought you along, Tim. Well, uh, uh, you didn't want to make a trip like this by yourself. And then you owe me something for that year I spent in jail for it. That's the reason I owe you something. And you're going to get it, too. Hmm. Every cent I got in the world, that's worth waiting for, boy. But this is a, this is a dangerous trip we're on. Not that I have any fear in my heart of man or beast. But I... I haven't been feeling very good lately, and I wish you'd kind of be kind of watchful, you know, uh, kind of a bit careful of me. Well, of, of what? Well, anything that might happen. I mean, uh, accidents, for instance, anything like that. Did that old faker over there upset you, Uncle? Him? Huh, of course not. No, no, I've just been wondering it would be the wisest thing that's coming to California this way. Oh, oh it, it was, Uncle. It was. You wouldn't like prison. I, I know. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> oh, don't forget now. Your uncle's going to look out for himself, but you watch out for him just the same. He still holds the purse strings, you know. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, Uncle George. Ain't nothing going to happen. I thought he was traveling with you. Not no more, he ain't. I hope you didn't take anything he might have said seriously. No, uh, it's only the fact that he has a very deep feeling against taking baths. And the fact that I have decided after very serious consideration that I don't think the Indians will be getting the vote in the very near future, especially in my precinct. <laughs> Keep him away, you hear? Sure, Uncle George. I don't trust him. He's probably a thief. Don't you worry, Uncle George. I'll watch him. <laughs> 
sure it's empty. I could have been killed. Both went all right. I feel my coat. Oh, it was an accident. We'll make sure it won't happen again. Thirty-five cents a piece for these in Boston. But couldn't get another one that my life depended on. Kim. Huh? Is that the way you keep an eye on things snoring away? Get some more wood. But it's late. Why don't you come to bed? I told you to get some more wood. Something to happen. You scared of yourself? I ain't scared of nothing. I'm gonna ask you to throw those bones again. No. All right, then I won't ask you. I'm gonna tell you. Throw them. sitting around watching me. Oh, George B. ain't gonna die just to make a profit out of a greasy old Indian. Come on, let's go to bed. I just chopped all this wood. Oh, it'll be there in the morning. <laughs> if there's one thing I learned, Never let anybody get away with trying to scare you. As your cousin Patrick O'Toole, Rusty Soul, used to say in 99% of the cases, it's all a bluff. Only with just his luck and it gets the other 1%. Oh, yeah. What's the matter? Can't stand snake tails. Slimy crawling. Get a hold of yourself. Uncle George? Look, I killed it. Get rid of that thing. The Indian Hale, he did it. Did what? Put the snake in my bed! He's trying to kill me. Now, why would he want to do a thing like that? Because he predicted that I was going to die. He wants to make sure. Now, you're just wrought up, Hanrahan. Hale, why aren't you my friend? I tell you, he's trying to kill me. All right, I'll look into it. I'll have a talk with him. Anything but snakes. 
Well, there won't be any more snakes. That one was just a fluke. Most of them are holed up by now. Now, you better get a hold of yourself and get to bed, or you'll talk yourself into a stroke. Yeah, yeah. Hell, you'll talk to him, won't you? I'll talk to him. You want to see me, Christopher? Hill? That's right, Ron Bear. Mr. Hanrahan thinks you're trying to kill him. Him wrong. Now, well, that's what I figured, too, but that doesn't make him feel any better. Christopher Hill, Running Bear not want to tell him what Bones say. Those bones of yours are a bunch of nonsense. Maybe. But George B., him gonna die five days. I'm beginning to think you really believe that. Him die five days. All right, him die five days. But I don't want to see you doing anything to make sure him die five days. You understand? Christopher Hill, me like George B. Him got big laugh, but him die five days. Then let's make sure it's from natural causes. Because if you do anything to hurry things along, you die six days. Dem, you know, you're all the family I got left. Sure, Uncle George. Tim, you gotta watch that Indian. He's trying to kill me. Oh, you're just upset. No, no, I can feel it. I'll watch him, Uncle George. You better. Running bear? They use running bear. You watch him, do you hear? Go ahead and come sneaking around. Don't even mention his name to me. I sure wouldn't want anything to happen to you, Uncle George. Now you go to sleep. I'll watch that Indian. this hand to hand in your state of mind it's not safe for you to have a gun no he could kill me i gotta protect myself you are in no danger from running bear you get that through your thick skull you can have this back again now get over there to your wagon and give him a hand you all right uncle george no thanks to you i couldn't help it you're the one who was going to keep his eyes open not going to let anything happen to his old uncle. What was I supposed to do? First the rifle, then the snake, and now this. Well, let me tell you this, my fine young lad. One more thing happens to me. One more of these accidents, and old George B. makes himself a new will. And you ain't going to be in it. One year in jail or no year in jail. Oh, 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 oh,
He's doing to our kid. Looks to me like he's just entertaining him. Don't you believe it. Who knows what he's teaching him? Pulling that mouse out of that fire. You that mouse in his hand all the time. That's what he wants you to think. I'd have thought so too. But any man who can make a wagon turn over just by thinking it. Mr. Hanrahan, I wish you'd stop worrying about running Bear. He's just an old man running for his life. I'm a paying customer, Hale. You're supposed to protect me. I am protecting you. Not as long as that witch doctor's on this train, you ain't. All right. If you won't do anything, maybe somebody else will. What do you suppose he meant by that, Chris? I don't know. But he has a point. I don't mind giving Running Bear a hand. Not if it causes trouble on the train. Him and his stupid predictions. Maybe it ain't enough that Hale keeps that greasy old savage on this train corrupting our children and stealing everything that ain't nailed down, but... Well, I don't know anything about anything being stolen. Yeah, how long is it since you've taken inventory? I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it ain't safe having him here. We'll wake up dead some morning. It is well known that Indians are sworn enemies of us all. Well, I got no reason to trust Indians. The Sioux burned me out twice. And as far as I can see, the only difference between the Sioux and the Utes are the Utes are here. Right. Well, if you folks come to any decisions, I'd appreciate knowing about it. Well, we haven't exactly made any decisions, Mr. Hale. Except we don't like that Indian, or any Indian, for that matter. Oh? Has he been causing you any trouble? Why don't you ask me that? I already know he hasn't caused you any trouble. Mr. Hanrahan here has the shakes over running bear. He thinks he's some kind of a magician, I guess. He tried to kill me. That's nonsense. I'll have another talk with him. But I won't have you hurting him, understand? He's done nothing wrong. As long as he keeps the rules and does what he's told, he has my permission to stay with us. And anyone taking any action against him will have to answer to me. And that goes especially for you, Hanran. Now, I think you've accomplished just about all you can here, so why don't you get back to the wagons? started something. Hanrahan's terrified. He started talking against you. Uh, him like a little boy, not man. A little boy or not, he's convinced a lot of people that I ought to throw you off this train. Bad. I don't want to do that, but I have an obligation to this train. Hanrahan's caused the trouble, and he can uncause it just as well. I'm scared. Well, you can fix that. You got to go to him and convince him that you were only joking when you said he was going to die. Not joke, Christopher Hale. Well, whether or not you think so doesn't matter, but you got to tell him there wasn't anything to it. Was well, not me, was Bones. No, oh, the devil take your bones. Now, I've given you an order, and I expect to see you obey it. Christopher Hale, maybe you think Running Bear not got good medicine. Sometime you're right, sometime you're wrong. Sometime maybe bones lie. This time, bones not lie. George B., him die. Running Bear, you go to Hanrahan and tell him that your prediction was a joke, or you get on your horse and you leave this train. Oot Braves, they follow Running Bear. Well, if you don't want to face them, you do what I told you. He tried to put as much mileage between us and him as he could. Especially since then, the Utes knew he was with it. He's a good start. Fast horse. Uh, well, you just find him, that's all. 
Never did anybody any harm. I'd never forgive myself if I ran him off and the youth got him. You find him and bring him back as fast as you can. Tell him he can ride with us as far as he wants to. Let's go. You feel any safer now, Hanran? Running Bear's gone. Well, I do that, indeed. Well, that's just fine. Have you any idea what happens to a man when he's staked out in the sun with wet rawhide knotted around his head? Now, the rawhide shrinks. The knots start to dig into his temple behind his eyes. The first thing that happens is that he goes mad, raving mad from the pressure. I'll let you imagine the rest. I just thought you ought to know. Mr. Hale, I don't wish him any harm. But he was trying to kill me just to make his own prophecy come true. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he wasn't hiding around somewhere still, waiting for his chance. He's gone. He's out there where the Utes are waiting to kill him. He's an Indian. He's good at hiding. He can run. He's an old man. Those young braves are good at chasing and finding. You ought to sleep well tonight. <laughs> Uncle George, there's not much wood around camp. There's not much wood around camp. Well, get busy. I'm hungry. Uncle George, what's to keep him from coming back? Oh, running bear. I mean, what's to keep him from, from coming back and, and trying to kill you? Shut up, stupid. Well, he could, you know, if he really wanted to. He could, he could come back at night. I told you to shut up. Something wrong with me? Oh, they're fine, Charlie. They don't look like you think they're fine. What is it to you, Mr. Chris? Uh, it's the lack of them. You didn't see any sign of any kind you rode out today. Huh? No, sir. No huge, no running bear, no sign of nothing. Well, I guess that's about that. How about some coffee? No, thanks. Mr. Hale? Oh, Mr. Hogan, what can I do for you? Running bear. What? I saw him. You sure? Well, it was it was pretty dark. When? Outside the wagon circle, near our wagon. You don't suppose that my uncle was right, do you? That he came back to kill him? You sure you didn't just imagine you saw him? Oh, no, I got good eyes, Mr. Hale. Frankly, up till now, I thought my Uncle George was just, you know, imagining things. Now I'm not so sure. Well, we've kept a pretty good lookout ourselves. We sure haven't seen anything. I understand that engines are pretty good at sneaking around without being seen. They're good enough. Well, I just thought you ought to know in case you wanted to do something about it. What do you think? I think if I was Hanrahan, I'd keep an eye on my nephew. I was thinking something like that myself. Phil. Yes? That Indian was back last night. My nephew saw him. That's so. Well, aren't you going to do anything? We'll look for him. Hale, that madman said I was going to die by tonight. This is the last day. I don't think you have anything to fear from Running Bear anymore. If I find that Indian lurking around my I wagon... I don't think he's in any condition to lurk anywhere. Now get aboard your wagon, please, Mr. Hanrahan. We're wasting time.
George. You idiot. What are you doing sneaking around here? It isn't me, Uncle George. I'm half starved, waiting for you. What do you mean it isn't you? It's running bear with his Tommy Hawk. And he's going to kill you, Uncle George. What are you doing? Kim! You keep away from me! So you're going to write me out of your will. You could always use that as a threat to keep me hanging around like a servant for the rest of my life. No, no, Uncle George. That's the way you're going to repay me for serving your time in prison? But I don't have to wait anymore, Uncle George. Not with old running bear hanging around, I don't. Robin Hogan! him out there. As soon as he's well enough, I'm going to turn him over to the authorities. Why? Why should he try to kill me? You know him better than I do. Now, you've got to take it easy, Henry Ann. You had a stroke or a heart attack or something out there. But I beat running bear, didn't I? <laughs> he said I was going to die today. <laughs> you stopped him. That's right. You're not going to die. Just in case it'll make you any easier, I'll double the guards tonight. I beat him. Yeah. No ignorant old savage in the world can beat good old George B. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with Hanrahan? Died last night. Running Bear must have killed him the way I figure. Go get Chris, will you? Yeah. Mr. Chris, they bring him in. Good. Did you 
have to kill him? We didn't kill him, Chris. Better take a look. 